Hello and welcome to the Mexop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Yeah, so you probably would have to maybe create some additional geometries of, you know, in Rhino to fill that because the fill hole command, if you go to the mesh, uh, you know, if you go to fill hole, it just says, you know, mesh edge on a whole boundary. So since this is probably a much larger hole, it's missing a lot of, uh, you know, faces in here. You know, that's that's the result of the, you know, what you would get in Rhino as you notice it. Right, it's it's much sharper in here. It's not very smooth, right? Yeah. It's not okay. So uh, there's a couple of other ways we could do it. It's one of the tools we have is as part of our 3D print module. We have manual hole fix as one of the options in here, and I can select the mesh, and I can say detect hole. So you can see that it detects these holes in here. Do you see them yeah. right here, sir? So now here I have uh, different types of um, fixing. I could do a, a planar minimum area or smooth. If I do a preview fix, if I click on this hole and do a preview, that shows uh, the type of mesh you can generate for fixing it. So the 3D print plugin has these additional tools that aren't typically offered or available in Rhino. Okay. How much is that, does this add in cost? Uh, I can get that information to you. Uh, I can look it up and let you know. Uh, this okay. is an add-in for uh, Rhinos. It's typically used for you know different variety of different applications. One of the applications commonly used is for 3D printing. Now, if you look at the uh, options in here, if you pick minimum area and preview it, you can see the type of uh, mesh that you get right here. So if I do fan, it'll use a different type of you know mm -hmm. fixing. A planar will just create a planar. So you can choose the different types. So here I can say smooth, and it'll try to maintain it as you know, as close as possible to the geometry. All right. Right, now I can say apply this fix. Yep, now I can go back and do the same process in here. And, um, you know, I can go back and say uh, manual hole fixing, select it, detect the holes. And now you can cycle through the list here. It basically highlights each of these holes. So we can iterate through the same process. And we can say you want to apply a smooth fix. You can say preview it, that'll preview. Uh, what the result of the mesh would look like, and then you can apply a fix for it. Do you have any questions so far? No. Nope. Can you fix the one part at the lateral there? You can kind of see it. Over here? Um, yeah. yeah, right there. Okay. So um, I can go back in here. I can preview the fix and then apply it. So there's these different commands, as you can see right there. And I can go back and select again, uh, perform the manual hole fix, detect the holes. And I can do a preview. Do you see the mesh, sir? Yeah, perfect. Okay, and then I can hit apply. So we fixed a bunch of these holes. Now you have these holes in here as well. You can, you know, basically go through the same process to uh, fix these as well. So go back to the manual fix, detect the holes, and you can cycle through the list as you see it, and apply the fix. Those All small right. holes probably. Yeah, you could just do and what he's doing. Yeah, they're not going to really make much difference yeah. for that for that. Okay, that looks great. All right, so I'm going to cancel out of this. And so we got the holes uh, filled up in here. We fixed the holes. I can yeah. close out the browser in here as well. Now we have unlimited undo and redo in here, so you can go over to the... I can click on undo, multiple. You can see all the right. fixes that we did. Even with the 3D print plugin, Whatever we fixed, can we, we can do undo and redo multiple. Okay. All right. So now what I can do is do a save or do a save as in here. And I can just go ahead and uh, save this, you know, file into Rhino. So it will be saved as a native Rhino file, a 3DM file. Now we also have a mesh splitting command uh, without having to create these uh, geometry in here. So for example, I'm going to hide this out right here. And I can also hide this. Now if you look at the uh, 3D print plugin, uh, we can go into the browser again. Now you have the control to perform a splitting, and the splitting can be set basically uh, parallel to whatever view you're in, as you notice it. 
right? So if I can, I can move the plane down or up, and I can choose this plane right here and say split. So in this particular step, it actually split it into two halves of the cutting plane what I chose. You see that, sir? Yeah. So you can take advantage of both the tools that are offered in Rhino and also complement it with the tools that are offered in the 3D print product to create the splits. And then once it's uh, split, just hide it, and then that kind of just gets rid yeah, of it. You can, uh, you can either hide it or you can delete it if you don't need it. You or if you want it. Okay. Yeah. You can even okay. just highlight it. So I know basically what I did was um, I just set it to hide, but I can select this and I can say delete it. I don't need this. Okay. Just, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Because once we cut it, we delete it out of there. We don't need yep. it anymore. Yeah, if you don't need it, you can delete it. Or if you want to save it for another processing, like you can retain it. Well, right, right. Okay. Well, more than likely, what we're going to do with that is we're going to save it as a separate file and then machine it. Yeah, you can even export select it. You can so here, I can select this in here and say, uh, if you right click on the save button, it'll let you export select it and you can say export it out. Okay. So, you know, for the purpose of this demo, I could just hit, um, you know, I could delete it out as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So tell me, so now, I want to, let, let's say, let, uh, let's say I want to machine this shape now. Okay, all right, uh, we could do that. So uh, now the first step I would do here is uh, get the part oriented correctly for machining. So. Um, from what I can see or understand is you would like to machine in this area, right? Yes. So we need to orient the part so that it's in the you know desired or intended orientation for milling or routing, depending on the you know stock blank you're going to be starting with, and you know uh, you know. So the first step I would do is uh, orient it. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just select the part and use the um, you know controls in Rhino like a gumball, and you can say you want to rotate it. Uh, you can rotate it like 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So right now you can see that the length of the part is oriented along the y-axis and the width is along the x. So if you need to reorient it in here, you can select it and then you can do a 90 degree rotation. So if I hold the shift key, it'll use the orthogonal snap so it'll rotate it only by 90 degrees. Okay. And you can further rotate it you know, to optimize your size of your stock. And also, if you want to uh, trim out some of these areas where you know some of the information is sticking out in here, you can always uh, you know fine tune it and do a. Can we do some thing. of that, like trim kind of the sides and the yeah? The bottom. So yeah. I could actually uh, create a you know maybe I can do even a, a polyline in here. Just create a, a line segment right in here to trim out some of these areas. So I could say mm -hmm. this is the section I would like to trim out. Again, you do the mesh split. So if you right click in here, it'll display all the commands that you were using earlier. And I could do the mesh split. Or I could take advantage of the uh, plugin, our 3D print plugin in here. And I can go into uh, Final 3D Print Browser. And then I can do the split command. And now I can actually just put in a plane. So you can see that it, everything that intersects with the plane gets trimmed. And I can adjust this uh, based on a model, right? So you can see that whatever areas that you want to retain. So here I can pick this area right in here, and everything over here gets trimmed. If I say split without capping it, so you'll now notice that it created this and this one, separate two separate pieces. And I can temporarily hide this or the other one. Does it look better? Yeah. I would move the plane. You cut some of the top of the back off. That's okay, so I can undo that, and then I can go back. And so basically, it, it is looking at the construction plane that you have in here. You can even rotate your construction plane uh, to a certain angle, or you can rotate the part. That way, you can choose where you want it to be cut. Or if you just want it to go kind of trim around the uh, periphery of the part, you know, you can do something like these. You can create like an outline or a boundary around it, and just go around and trim it. Uh, 